Hi everyone, so I have been doing capsule wardrobes for three years now. I'm going into my fourth summer capsule wardrobe, which is pretty crazy. So I asked you on Instagram and Patreon if you had any questions, and we're gonna do a capsule wardrobe Q&A today. So I got a ton of great questions and I will try to answer as many as I can without making this video too long. So the first question is from Rochella Angel 87 and they say, how do you stay with the method as long as you have? Do you ever feel bored or limited? What do you do when the method feels stale? So I do, I guess, feel bored sometimes and maybe a bit limited sometimes, but I always try to remember the benefits that I'm getting out of the capsule wardrobe, such as no longer having that feeling of not knowing what to wear, being able to open up my closet and just grab an outfit. I try to figure out new or different ways of wearing the clothes I have. I find that I'm actually a lot more creative with a smaller wardrobe. Instead of just grabbing a few items, I really like being able to try and figure out new and different ways of wearing my clothes. If I'm consistently feeling really bored with my capsule wardrobe though, then maybe it is time to bring in a new item. I will look at my wish list, items that I've been thinking about quite a bit. Bringing in a new item can definitely liven up the wardrobe and you have to find outfits for that item. I don't buy new pieces very often, but I do find that it can really change the wardrobe, even just adding one piece. Something that I've also noticed is, especially recently, I'm planning my capsules in a way that forces me to be a bit more creative or maybe pushes me out of my comfort zones a bit. And I really like that. I think that that is a good way to, I don't know, refresh or get new ideas, new outfit inspiration with the pieces I have if I'm trying to push myself a bit and try new things. Next, Julie Bygrass says, do you find it easier to create a capsule with pieces of similar colors? I love red, blue, pink, and army green and they don't go so well together. And I also got another similar question from Frickin' Delight who says, how can I have a successful capsule if I love all my pieces but they don't easily intermatch? So it definitely is easier to build a capsule wardrobe with a monochromatic color palette or all neutrals because it's pretty easy to have things go together, but it's still possible to have a colorful capsule wardrobe. It just takes some more planning and I guess a bit more strategy going into it. One tip which I think is super helpful is to focus all your colors and statement pieces in items that won't be worn together. For example, every single one of your tops could be a completely different color and it wouldn't matter because you don't wear them together. And then if you had more versatile or neutral bottoms, then you could still make a ton of different outfits. Now, going into a capsule wardrobe, it might not be set up that way for you. You might have a bunch of different colors and statement pieces in tops and in bottoms and in jackets and in other pieces. So it can be difficult to transition into a capsule wardrobe with that, but I think the best thing to do is to pick the pieces that you really love wearing and try to think of at least three to five different outfits that you can wear those pieces with. Create big lists with all the different outfits and try to find the pieces that you can create the most outfits with or have the most crossover. So the items in your capsule wardrobe don't have to go with everything else, but as long as you can create different outfits, then they'll work. Your capsule wardrobe might not look cohesive with everything together, but as long as you're strategic about where your colors and statement pieces are, then you can still have a really versatile capsule wardrobe. It can also be really fun to have a capsule wardrobe with lots of different colors and kinds of pieces because it sort of pushes you to try combinations that you might not have tried otherwise. So even though it is more challenging, I still really encourage you to try it out, see how it goes. If you feel like you need to add a few more pieces to make the rest of the capsule wardrobe work, then definitely do that. You can play around with how it works best for you. It is a bit more work, but it's still totally possible. Next, Krista Dimitriuk says, I wanna try and make my own clothes. I don't know where to start though, and if I could experiment without a sewing machine. So you can definitely sew and change up your clothes without a sewing machine. You can hand sew, or there are different things like iron on things where you can hem clothes without sewing them. I really encourage you to check out some thrift transformations. I think that is a lot easier than making a garment from scratch. And there are some great YouTube channels and tutorials. I will link those below. And some of them don't involve sewing. Next, Eva Spera says, have you found your personal style? What things inspire you? Music, movies, trends, books, people, etc." I think that personal style is very much just about wearing what you love wearing and what feels really good to wear and I have a video a lot more about personal style and finding your personal style which I will link up in the cards if you want to check that out I really recommend watching that it goes a lot more in depth and I feel really good with my style and my clothes I do want to push myself a little bit like I mentioned and try some new things and get some more unique and statement items into my wardrobe 
but overall I'm pretty happy with my style and my clothes. I am most inspired by other people's outfits, by photos, probably by movies I think, but really you can get inspiration anywhere from a color palette in a photo to nature to books, like all kinds of things I think you can draw inspiration from. Next, Nadia Jewel says, how do you decide what you will splurge on and what you won't? So I'll splurge on items that I think are special, that I know that I'm going to have a long time. I'll also splurge on any basics that I get a lot of wear from. I will try to invest in good quality, but you can also find good quality brands secondhand. I also want to support ethical and sustainable brands, so if I find a piece I love from a brand like that, I'm definitely willing to pay more money. Now, I don't add a lot of new pieces to my capsule wardrobe, so I find I can usually purchase maybe one or two ethical or sustainable brands and then if I need anything else I'll get that second hand. If it is a piece that I think is a bit more trendy though I will definitely get that second hand instead of new because I'm less likely to have it a long time. Next, Mamiez says, any tips for beginners? When you're starting off, I think it can be maybe really intimidating and you don't really know where to start. And I think there's a tendency to maybe overthink things. My tip would just be to try it out. If something doesn't work, you can adapt things and play around with it, but just try it because you will learn a lot about yourself, about the capsule wardrobe process, and you're not gonna get anything perfect right off the bat. So. Don't worry too much about that. And also focus on what your goals are going into it. So if you're doing it because you really wanna reduce decision fatigue, or maybe you're doing it because you wanna hone your style more, or maybe you want to focus on investing in better quality pieces. So as long as you're structuring your capsule wardrobe in a way to achieve those, that's what matters. A capsule wardrobe is a tool. So as long as you're using it in a way that's benefiting you, that's what's important. Next, the Zulfold says, what's your best wardrobe staple? So I guess the boring answer is my jeans because I wear them a lot, but staple items for me in my wardrobe are versatile pieces because I think having items that I can wear in a lot of different ways really expands the options in my capsule wardrobe. And I have a video all about versatile items and some of my favorite versatile pieces, which I can link up in the cards. Next, Liebe Nachhaltig says, have you ever thought about giving up the capsule system and just having one really small amount of clothes you love? So I have thought about that and I don't actually think it would work well for me because first of all, we have pretty distinct seasons where I live. So I don't think I would want my winter clothes mixed in with my summer clothes just because it would make my closet more cluttered and it's not pieces that I would be wearing anyways, so I might as well have them out of the way. And also, I really like pulling out my out of season clothes when I'm planning my new capsule wardrobe. I think it feels really exciting to have these pieces again and they feel almost like new pieces sometimes. That to me is such a great way to stay excited about pieces that I've had for a really long time. For example, I pulled out my long red skirt for my summer capsule wardrobe and I'm really excited to wear it even though I've owned that skirt for over five years, I think. But because I haven't worn it in a really long time and I was thinking about how I'm gonna pair it with my summer capsule, I got really excited to wear it again. And I think if I had all my clothes together all the time, I wouldn't have that same excitement. And this is not a question anyone asked, but I do wanna clarify it because I do get questions about this. I don't have 33 items for each season. The really seasonal clothes might only be in one or two capsule wardrobes, but a lot of the pieces are in multiple capsule wardrobes. Next, Wolt Kopfian says, where do you put all the stuff that's not in your capsule? So currently I put everything in a drawer at the very bottom of my closet, but previously I've hung it up in a separate wardrobe. I've also had stuff folded away in a suitcase. It really depends on what kind of space you have, but as long as it's in a good storage place away from the rest of your clothes, that's all that matters. Next, Laura Lime says, how do you factor activewear into the equation? I have the most enormous activewear collection and it's a bit overwhelming, but I can't rewear a piece without washing it. So first of all, activewear is not part of your normal capsule wardrobe. I think that if you have a lot of activewear, you maybe want to approach it as its own capsule wardrobe if you're trying to declutter the amount of activewear you have, but it really depends on how much you're wearing it and how often you wash it. And I think that is the equation to go by. So if you're doing laundry once a week and you're working out every day, then I guess you need seven outfits for the week. That kind of thing is really based on your needs and that's gonna be 
totally different for each person. Next, the Megan Adams says, do you have a season that feels most true to you? I've been doing capsules for a year and summer is the most fun because my boho style shines through most in the summer. Do you have a fave season to capsule or tips how to bring the joy of your fave season into other seasons? So that's a great question and it's kind of fun to think about. I guess probably fall and spring are my favorites. I find that in the summer and winter, I'm dressing more so to the weather. Whereas in the fall and summer, I think you can still layer and play around with outfits, but you don't have to worry too much about the weather. I mean, sometimes in a bit, because it can get really rainy or not. But yeah, I think that those two are probably where I feel the most excited about my clothes and my outfits. In terms of incorporating your style into other seasons, I think trying to figure out what elements of your clothes you really like. Can you maybe incorporate some of those things into your fall or winter clothes. Maybe you can wear some of those same pieces and just layer them or wear them a bit differently. Some styles definitely are showcased better in certain seasons. But yeah, I guess trying to see what elements you can maybe take into other seasons and then really enjoying your favorite season when it comes around. Next, Kai Axa D. Stratagema says, what has changed in the way you plan your capsule in the last three years? So I definitely am a lot faster with planning my capsules. I think less about what outfits I'm gonna wear and how I'm gonna pair things because I have a much better sense of what I usually wear together. I definitely did fall a bit into the neutral capsule. I found I was gravitating more to neutral pieces just because I knew that I could wear them with a ton of stuff, but I do wanna push myself a bit more to bring in some more unique and interesting pieces. But overall, I think I've just gotten faster and more efficient with planning my capsule wardrobe, and also really focusing on what works well for me. I am more flexible about the rules than I initially was, which I talked more about in my one year update. So I think while the rules of a capsule wardrobe can be really helpful when you're starting out, after you get a good sense of what's working well for you, then it's really just about customizing it and making it work for you. Next, Laura11MP says, I'm interested in capsule wardrobes, but I have a ton of clothes that I've accumulated over the years. Some of them are my mom's aunts or grandma's, so they bring me memories, how do I start? So I think first of all, it's important to remember that the memories aren't attached to the clothes. So you can still have the memories without having the clothes. I think a great idea is taking a photo of them so that you still have that visual reminder. Some people suggest making quilts or other heirloom pieces where you can showcase those special items without having a closet full of clothes. With any items I'm unsure about getting rid of, I like to pack them away for a while so that they're out of sight, I'm not thinking about them. And then when I take the box out, first of all, there's usually a ton of stuff that I can't even remember is in there, which kind of shows me that I don't really need it in my life. And I also think that it really helps solidify the pieces that you really want to keep and the pieces that you're okay letting go of. Finally, Jalen Dyer has a few questions. And first she says, what do you find the most useful after three years? I assume you mean the pieces that I find the most useful. And I guess that is just really good basics. They're kind of boring to have, but those tanks and jeans and t-shirts and good layering items, I think are great to have and super versatile. She also says, do you usually replace a piece with something similar or something different? If it's a basic, I will generally replace it with something very similar, like a black tank. I'll usually get another black or dark tank. If it's something that's pretty unique and different, I won't usually buy the exact same piece. I'll usually get something else. So if it's like a special dress, maybe I'll take some elements of it if I'm replacing it that worked well. So if it was like a big flared dress and I loved wearing that, I might get something of a similar style, but I usually won't replace it directly. And her final question is, what do you love most about a capsule wardrobe? I love how easy it is for me to get ready and to mix and match things. I can just grab what I need from my closet without a ton of thought, or I can put in a lot of thought and creativity into it if I want to. I do like that it makes me more creative with my capsule wardrobe. I definitely wear a lot of outfits that I wouldn't wear otherwise, and that's really nice. Having a closet full of clothes that I love wearing. I think back to all of the pieces that I used to have in my closet that I didn't really like that much, and it's so nice to have just a ton of clothes that I really like. And as you guys know, minimalism and capsule wardrobes and sustainability is really connected for me. So having a capsule wardrobe allows me to invest in high quality pieces from ethical and sustainable brands. And that's something that I absolutely love. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to those of you who asked questions. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to get through all of them, but I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and thank you so much to those of you supporting me on Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.